Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I've just been sitting here talking to myself for 15 minutes. It's hilarious. I was actually, um, I actually thought I was online, and I've been chatting away, asking for people for comments, <laughs> things like that. So I've actually been on for nearly 15 minutes chatting to myself. So I've been going through all of this stuff. Um, showing things about style and websites and all these other things and I haven't even been online. I forgot to press the actual thing to take me online. I thought I was. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Um, so say hi if you are actually here. Um, yeah, sorry guys for the ones I kept waiting. Um, I was just, like I said, I've just been talking to myself for 15 minutes. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my God. Um, now, we're going to have a chat today about uh, working out your style and building your portfolio and things like that. Now that I know I'm actually online, um, we can actually start. So uh, say hi, guys, if you actually are watching. Um, hi, Delta Dave. How are you? I'm just having a laugh because of <laughs> chatting to myself for 15 minutes. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, God. Um, now, what I'm going to do today, I'm actually going to take you through uh, setting up your well, building your portfolio, but there's things that we have to discuss before we do that. Now, this is going to be built onto uh, the setting up your business in, onto that playlist. Um, so this is just another uh, video added on to everything else that we're doing. But before we can think about starting to build your websites and getting clients, we have to work out what type of, of style you want to use. And so I'm going to talk to you about that as well. Uh, hi, David. How are you, mate? Um, so let's start because what I'm going to take you through, I've got a, a stack of websites here that I sort of looked at. There's no point reinventing the wheel. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you these websites that I found and I'll link them in the description box down below so you can have a read of these articles as well. Uh, I'm also going to take you through my style and how I found my style and things like that. So we, we're going to talk about that uh, all together as well at the same time. So g'day Ben, how are you buddy? Um, so let's cross over to this. And I want to show you this now. This is from Digital Photography School, and it's talking about how to find your personal photographic style. Now, the thing is, guys, before you actually build your website, remember one of the main things that you actually have to do when you're building your website is to have consistency and everything like that. You don't want to be attracting clients that, you, that basically don't fit what you want to do. Now, for instance, I don't photograph babies. The only time I ever photograph babies is if brides beg me to do it. And even then, I'll usually pass them on to a lo another local photographer. So for me, I only want to be doing what I love. And that's one of the most important things that I can say to you guys. One of the mistakes that most photographers make in their early days is to just basically shoot everything. And you can be this jack of all trades, but basically good at not one single thing. And I think that's a, that's a mistake that you really need to avoid. I know you can make money doing these other things, but to me, it's, life is not all about just making money. It's also about enjoying what you want to do. Because the problem is, if you're photographing things that you don't love, you're going to hate doing it. You're going to burn out, and it's going to show in your work. I'm no good at shooting babies. I mean, people tell me I do a good job, but I hate doing it. And when I look at the images, I just don't like the, the look of those images. I love doing things like cake smashes and things like that because they're with, they're with older children. And I really enjoy that type of work. And obviously, once kids can sit up and move around and things like that, I really enjoy doing those. I just don't like doing newborn babies. And so that's one area that I just don't look for now. And it's so therefore, I'm not even showing that in my portfolio. So it's a really important thing that you do develop your portfolio to show what you want to shoot, because that's the type of people you're going to attract in. Now, one of the main things, too, is you also have to do that with your style as well, because if your style's all over the place, you just won't get work because no one will hire you for the look that you're producing. And they're going to get confused about what they actually, well, whether they like you, whether they don't like you, whether they like this look, whether they don't like that look. And that's the thing that you've got to work out. I have a really different style, I think, too, in that it's quite dark and mysterious usually. And because I came from a fashion background, often it is a very fashion-y type look. But that's the type of look that I want, and that's the type of look that I love. Even when I'm shooting uh, young children, I still have that fashion look about it, which, which, like I said, I came from a fashion background. So for me, that's the type of look that I was all, I've always loved. And it's the type of look that when I put in my portfolio, so when people are coming in to hire me, they've already seen my work, they already know what they're going to get, and they're hiring me for the look that I'm actually producing. 
producing. So the problem is if you're showing all this different work, if you're showing wedding work, you're showing portraits, you're showing babies, you're showing food photography, you're just not going to get work out of that because there's so much competition in that in that area for, for just basically doing everything. And I'm saying really, to be honest, I think you need to specialize. Now, I know it might be frightening, but eventually you'll get work coming in when you're good enough and your work is good enough to show it. You'll get work in that you love doing. And until that point, you shouldn't leave your job or do whatever you're gonna do. You have to build up over a period of time, build this portfolio up, build up your style, and then you can say, well, now I've got enough background work or I've got enough of my amazing portfolio to think that I'm going to go full time and start to bring some work in. But let's look at these sites because I thought we could go through this together and basically it's um, talking about how to find your photographic style. So let me just bring up uh, the, we've got uh, Delta Dave's here, uh, David Johnson's here, Ben's here, Jim's here. Hi guys, how are you going? Ask any questions as we go along guys because um, I'll stop and answer them uh, when I see them. Um, so we're talking about here, how do you find your own photographic personal style? And usually I've found that, well, with me, it just comes naturally. So it's the type of images that I like to look at, and it's the type of images I just like to shoot. You can't force a style on yourself, and that's what you've got to be careful, because if you look down here at a next question, um, it says, what defines your photographic style? Like I said, I think it comes to you naturally. If you try and copy other photographers, and it's not your style, it just usually never works. What you need to be doing is looking at other people's work all the time, and you'll find a look or, or a, tip, a particular type of photography that you love doing. And that's basically what you should be basing your style on, because you'll know what you love to, to look at. You'll know whether it's food that you like to look at. You'll know whether it's photographing animals that you like to look at. Uh, you know, photographing children, doing weddings, doing fashion. That type of image will really appeal to you, and that's the type of image that you should be concentrating on for your um, for your style. And clearly, I would say that you know you've got to research, look at all other photographers. I often go down to the library and I look through photographic books. I'll always be getting fashion. I mean, the girls usually magazines. I'm always buying the girls magazines, uh, things like Clio and all these other magazines because I love to look at the, f the photography and the fashion in those and I'm looking at it for inspiration all the time. And that's basically what I do all the time. And, you know, I'm always online looking at other photographers that I love to look at. Um, so there's some images basically. And like I said, I'll put these links in the description box down below so you can have a look at uh, how these actually uh you can read these fully yourself. And this is a real good statement because it's saying forget what everyone else is doing. You shouldn't worry about who's popular, who's got the most followers, who's doing this and who's doing that. Because remember, this is your work that you're trying to sell. You've got no one else that can do this for you but yourself. So you have to think about what you love to shoot. And that's why I'm saying it's so important to choose a style that you love, that you adore, that you can then build on and work on with inspiration to build up your portfolio. And to make sure that your portfolio matches that style so when people are trying to search for you that they find that style there and they know it's you so that's what they're saying don't copy anyone else's work um, or look you know if, if it doesn't you can obviously use it as inspiration but just don't copy it if it's not the style that you actually love to actually shoot um, and I've said here, well, they've said here, figure out what inspires you. And like I said, as soon as you start to look at things, you'll find work that does inspire you. And that's where you can then use that work for inspiration. And that's a really important thing that use, I don't mind like anyone, if anyone ever wants to use my work for inspiration, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'd hate someone to just do a direct copy of it, which sometimes happens, but if they're just using my work for inspiration, well, that's fine. I've got no issues with people doing that at all. And, you know, and I think that's a bit of an honor uh, when people do that. So that's a really good thing. And I think that's a really important thing to get. So find something that you love to look at and then try and, you know, try and copy it a little bit, but change it, but try and copy what they're doing. See how they've done their processing. See how the lighting was done. What mood was used in the photo, in the photograph. So these are all things that you can look at when you're actually working out what style you actually want to do. Uh, again, we'll just scroll down. You can read this image. Like I said, you can read this article yourself. Now, this is the important part that is actually developing your style. Now, remember, it's so important that once you find the style you like, to just work at it. Too many people in this industry are in too much of a hurry to get out there and start producing work for, for payment. Uh, there's, no, there's no issue doing that if you're working for free. 
because you're just building a portfolio. And we'll talk about these things a little bit later, but uh, don't rush. Build your portfolio up really, really slowly. Take your time. When, once you find your style, work at it, do courses, do things like that. Go, go to workshops to sort of develop the style that you love. Remember, you should never quit your job if you haven't got a really good portfolio to back you up. Um, and, but we'll talk about also the money side of things as, as we build this um, whole series up a little bit later. Just let me check down here what Jim said. Um, Jim said, I'm definitely mirandering my, for my own style, somewhat contaminated because I'm trying to copy. And, and the, like I said, Jim, it's fine copying and you'll work out the style that you love to look at. The issue is you shouldn't just do a direct copy. You've got to try and change it a little bit. Try and think about how I can change it, but still be relating to the style that you actually love. And that's the thing that you've got to do. Um, I mean, I look at other people's work and, and emulate it, you know, and I'll think, oh, I love that, and I'll try and do it, but just change it a little bit. Um, and that that's fine. It, it's okay when you're initially doing something, and I used to do it all the time, and I still do it now. I'll look for images for inspiration when I'm doing a shoot, and I'll look at those images, and I'll bring them up, and then I'll try and sort of match the rough feel of what that image was like. And 90% of the time, it's similar, but it's not a direct copy, and that's the thing that you've got to try and avoid. But remember, if it's a style that you love doing, well, there's no problem in looking at that work and copying it, as long as it's not a direct copy, because eventually you'll find that your style will get... Your, your skills will get good enough that you can then basically change it and it'll all come natural. The, uh, the initial part is you have to work out what style you love. So I hope that answers that, Jim. Don't, don't just try and copy it, though. Just use it as inspiration, uh, and you'll find what you really love doing. Um, and they're saying here just by developing your style, and, and I'll show you my style in a minute because we can have a look. And In fact, I'll show you now just so we can come over and you can get an idea. So you'll sort of see when you look at my style that it is a very fashion type look. Uh, I always love that fashion look of images that I, I produce. It's just, I mean, I'm not saying it's great work, but it's just what I love doing. So if you look at it, most of the work that you look at is quite dark. I do always have this dark type look, and most of my processing is usually very, very similar. Um, if you're looking at the, the second shot, again, you can see that it looks very similar to the first one. So if you're looking at these two images, they've been processed very similar. And again, it does have a fairly dark look. It's never very bright and contrasty, my work. It always does have a tend of, tendency to be a little bit dark. But again, when people hire me, they're hiring me for that look that I'm producing. So that's important for me. So it doesn't matter what you're showing in your portfolio, as long as you love it. And if the, the thing is, if you're shooting stuff you hate, you're going to hate the job. And that's the main thing that I can tell you. Like I said, I don't like sh photographing newborns. I, I hate doing it. And so I'm just not going to do it anymore. Uh, again, if you're looking at this work coming across, you can see again how it's, it's, it's quite dark work. Now, you might have seen some of these images before, but I'm just taking you through as a general um, look of about my typical style that you can see. And you'll see that it does have and a sort of look that you can see all the time that it's very dark and mysterious usually uh, the type of work that I like to actually produce uh, again you know it's got that sort of quite dark look about it a bit mysterious um, and like I said it's just just what I love to photograph you know and sometimes there has been a, a bit of processing in it but again that's the type of work that I do produce a, a lot of it has been highly edited and and like I said I came from a fashion background so it always is going to be highly edited anyway anything I share will always be highly edited I'll never share anything uh, that hasn't had editing done uh, when I'm talking about my portfolio because I, I want people to see my work at its best um, again you can sort of see here that you know it's got that sort of dark look about it again. It's been backlit, um, but again, it's got that sort of ethereal look about it, you know, that I, that I love to do. Um, you can see again, it's still got that mysterious look about it. So I hope that you can sort of see how my style um, does have a specific look. Occasionally, when I'm doing modeling ones like in the snow, they will be quite bright and airy, and these ones are, but it's still, I think you can still tell that it's had my style about it when you're looking at these images. Um, you know, and these ones that, some of these I've got in my portfolio, some of them I haven't. But again, you can sort of see it following through that it has a similar feel to, to nearly all of these images when we're scrolling through them. Um, I'm just going to go through these quickly, but you'll sort of get an idea about how my style actually is. These were ones I like to sort of get a Game of Thronesy type look about them when I was doing them. Um, we went up to the snow and did them in the snow. 
Um, again, you can sort of see here, it, it's a bride walking in a forest. Um, this one was done with a waterfall. This was taken with one shot, believe it or not. Um, the, uh, I had a, the camera on a tripod and the girls were frozen with flash and it had a long shutter speed for the waterfall in the background. Again, uh, the girls uh, here on the beach. But again, you can sort of still tell that it has my type of style and editing in them. Uh, and these last two that you sort of look at are typical of the type of work that I love. You know, they, I mean, these are, this is really the type of work that I would love to do. Uh, I love that really dark sort of editing look uh, that's sort of striking and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I still love doing images like this, of course, but if you're talking about the work that I really adore doing, it's, it's this type of work. If I could do that all the time, that's the type of work that I'd be doing all the time. Jim said, David, do you have other eyes critique your work before going public? Uh, I don't anymore, Jim, but I did when I was um, in my y younger days. I certainly did. I don't anymore because I'm confident enough now in what I share that um, you know people are going to like it. When you're starting out, and I'll talk about that as we go on, Jim, so we'll, we'll bring that up um, a little bit later as well. Uh, let me just bring that back up the uh, this portfolio, this building your style. So that's the part about building your style. Now, like I said, once you've worked out um, what style you you've actually have, and remember, you're going to have to work on this for a long time. This isn't something that you can just jump at because we haven't even built the portfolio yet. At this stage of your business, you should only be building your portfolio. Uh, sorry, your style. That's the first thing that you have to do, and you must probably need to work on this for something like 12 months. It's, it's got to be done for a period of time, slowly, to make sure that you do build something and keep throwing stuff out that you're not happy with, and then keep building your skills. Like I said, if you think you love this high fashion-y look with flash, well, concentrate on learning how to use flash. Concentrate on learning light shaping, and do that for a good while before you're really consistent in what you're doing. Remember, the thing that you want to build with your with your style is, is consistency, and you want every image to have a certain feel. They don't have to look the same, but you want someone, when they're looking at it, to be able to tell that it's actually your work, and that's the important thing about doing this, that you have to try and build a consistency in your portfolio. So let's go on to the next thing, which are some of the things about do and don'ts about building your portfolio. Um, and I'm going to come down here. Let's look at this one first. So how to build a portfolio without clients. So th this is the hard thing to actually get with um, people. This is also from Digital Photography School. I find they're a great site to look at. They're an Australian site, I believe. Um, but how do you build a, a really good portfolio without, um, oh, thank you so much, Delta Dave. I really appreciate that. Just gave me a donation. Thank you so much. Um, so how do you build a big portfolio without a client? Well, for starters, guys, you're going to have to basically work hard. And what I mean by that is there's no reason why you can't work for free. And this is the issue. You'll see so many photographers, and this annoys the crap out of me, saying they're destroying the industry. These people that are working really, really cheap are destroying the industry. They forget what it was like when they first started. And look, I'm a professional. I'm a working photographer with a full-time business. And I would never, ever have a go at someone for being cheap in the industry. Because you have to start somewhere, and you've got to remember that. Um, I don't believe you should do weddings for free unless they're for a friend. I think you should be working under another photographer to basically learn from that photographer and do that basically for nothing for them. That's the way you can build yourself up in the wedding industry is to work and be mentored by a photographer. And the thing is, don't give up when you're asking people to mentor for them. I have people all the time that follow me. They will usually carry my bags and do things and they'll watch how I do the day. And that's mentoring them and they can ask me any questions they like. And there's no issue with doing that. And just don't give up. If you ask a number of photographers and they say no, because a lot of photographers just won't do it, they should though. Any photographer should be willing to give back to the, to, because how did they start? And that's the thing, I had people helping me when I started. So I would hate to think if someone asked me questions that I wouldn't help them. Because remember, at the end of the day, there's no 
point about being paranoid about not having enough work or whatever. There's plenty of work for everyone. And there's different levels of, of work that are, that are for everyone. And it's hard starting your business. And, you know, I, I would love to think that I've been able to help other people. It's not going to affect the amount of work that I get because people that hire me aren't going to be hiring these people that are just starting up anyway. So you've got to try and think like that, guys, when you're, you're working. So my idea is if you want to get into wedding photography is to go and ask as many wedding photographers as you can until someone says yes. And the problem is a lot of the time you are just not forward enough and you're not forceful enough. I don't mean forceful in, in being forceful with a photographer, but you just give up too easy. So you've had 10 knockbacks, then you get a bit depressed and you lose your motivation and then you stop asking. The thing is you've got to keep asking until you find someone that will allow you to do it. So that's the most important thing with weddings. Don't shoot weddings unless you, you really are being mentored by someone and particularly don't work for free unless it's a friend and you've actually listed it down in a wedding contract that you're not responsible for the images that come out in case if there's issues and things like that um, because you really shouldn't do it and I even wouldn't do weddings for free unless I'd had some wedding experience before I'd actually done it. Now other things for instance with um, shooting children well use your friends and, and like if you look at this website over here uh, it's saying here that um, if you're photographing children, well, there's, there's multiple things you can do if you're trying to get to photograph children. Well, you can do things like uh, ask any friends if they'd love to have photographs taken of their kids. And, you know, say, and, and just say that you'll give them the free images if, if, if you've done it. And this way you can build up a little portfolio. You can start using... Um, your images online and things like that to share to show what you've shared and it's a real great way of, of starting out go to kindergartens go to places like that and say you'll you'll shoot the kids for free if, you, if they're willing to let you share the images and things like that you know there's all different things that you can do about being smart about sharing your images go onto Facebook and, and offer free photography because you're building your portfolio but again I wouldn't be sharing these early images too early on until you've built this real style that you love and that's the thing don't forget it's so important that whatever you're shooting matches the style that you've already created and I'd only be sharing your best images but we'll talk about that um, soon sort of coming up um, and they're saying here that photographing high school seniors, uh, most of the bub benefits um, apply to shooting um, senior portraits. Um, any high school or college youth mo can model for you and no one will know the differences before you go out and shoot. This is a thing too that a lot of people say they're too nervous to do this. Remember, as long as you don't show you're nervous, they will not know that you're nervous. And this is the thing with any photography that's starting. They won't know that you're nervous. Even if you're chimping on the back of the, the screen, as long as you look confident, you'll be fine. And that's the thing that I say to people. Just, look, just try and look confident. If you're shooting stuff on the back of the camera and it doesn't look any good, or you're a bit worried about exposure or whatever, don't show them that you're worried. Just keep going, fix what you've got to do, and then move on. But, you know, <clears throat> advertising, in local schools um, a lot of those places would love to get their kids photographed uh, for nothing if you say that you'll share the photos there's lots of different things that you can do to get um, uh, models to shoot with now I'm not suggesting that you use these in your portfolio though to be totally honest I actually think if you're trying to build a really good portfolio you should be using professional models now you can go to places like model mayhem all these other areas and ask in there to get models. Often though, those people won't show up on the day. And to be honest, sometimes a lot of those models aren't very good either. And they can make life harder for you. I found one of the best things that you can do if you're trying to build a portfolio is to pay for a model. Because for starters, that model will know how to pose and they will actually help you. Remember that you're being paid, you're paying them for your time. So what a great way to actually do it. Oh, thank you so much, Jim. <laughs> Jim has also made a donation. Um, one of the best things that you can do is pay for a model. Now, you can get a fairly good model for in Australia. You can pay just over probably $150 and you'll get a really good model. Now, it might sound expensive, but it's not, guys, in the long run because what you'll get from that person with working with a really good model is you'll get amazing poses. They'll know what to do. They'll help you. If you're honest with them at the beginning to say you're building your portfolio, you'll get so much more out of working with a model that knows how to move, knows how to use their hands, knows how to turn their body. Things like this can be unbelievable in being able to build your portfolio. Obviously, 
Also working at, at, like I said, for workshops can also be a really good thing as well. You've just got to be careful though when you're choosing workshops that that photographer you're working with basically is doesn't take over the whole workshop and lets the actual people in the workshop shoot most of the time. Some places that you go when you go to these workshops, they, they're mostly in it for their portfolio building. So you've got to be careful in workshops that you do that it is actually for you and not for just them building their portfolio. Also, make sure that you can share the images for your portfolio because some of these workshops don't allow you to share them. So you've got to make sure that you get a model release. That's another thing too, when you're building any of these, doing any of these shoots, make sure you do use a model release. Uh, I have one on my phone. Uh, I've got a couple of them that I actually use um, and I can't remember what they are. Uh, let me just see if I can find them um, because I'm using the Mac version. Uh, I'll just see which ones I've got. Um, I probably won't be able to find them now because I'd like to show you. Let me just go model. Uh, no, I can't find them. If I find them, I'll find them later, but there's a couple that I use. I mostly use them on my iPad. That's why I can't find them on here. Um, but I use model releases all the time because the, the thing is you've got to remember that you've got to make sure that you're able, you're able to share those images that you've got legally. And even if you're photographing children, get the parents to sign those model releases. So they're really important. Make sure any shoot that you do, they're always sh uh, signing model releases to give you uh, the release to allow you to do whatever you want to do with that release. So like I said, if you're starting, I cannot basically tell you enough the benefits of hiring a good model. Those models will always show up because they're being paid. I often used to deal with things like Model Mayhem where you'd basically organise a whole shoot, you have this whole thing that's organised for them to come in and then they wouldn't turn up and it's just devastating. So if you hire a really good model, you, then you can choose the model that you want to because if you go to mo good uh, model agencies, they'll have great portfolios that you can look at and you can find one that suits your style and like I said, they will teach you more imposing than you, than you could ever probably learn even in a workshop. Um, so let's just go back here. Um, and they're talking about photographing weddings and they're saying assist a local, uh, a local wedding photographer. And that's like I said, just don't give up. Um, hi, Snap Click, how are you, mate? Um, just make sure that you do keep persisting with wedding photographers until you find someone that you can work with. Offer to carry their bags. Offer to just help them for the day. Say you don't need to be there shooting. I won't even bring my camera. I just like to watch what you do and I'll carry your bags and tripods or whatever for the day. And you'll learn so much doing that a few times. And then you may even then start to be able to be hired as a second shooter. So, you know, what a great thing to do. Some photographers will even allow you to shoot on the day. So, you know, they're a great way of, of getting into the wedding industry. Um, then they're saying here that photographing real estate, you could also offer and go to real estate agencies. I tried that for a while. Uh, I did go to a number of real estate agencies and, and I gave them a really cheap price actually to just get in and I did get quite a, a lot of work uh, doing that. But to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it so I never pursued it. Uh, again, it's for me, it's about what I really love doing. But if you would like to get into real estate, go into all different real estates and show them. Say, look, I'll give it to you a, a real cheap price. I'll offer to do the first one for you for free just so I can get in the door. And then if you do great work, hopefully they'll call you back. Like I said, there's no problem working for free, guys, if you're just trying to start. Don't let any other photographers have a go at you about that. Remember, everyone had to start somewhere. They just won't tell you that they did that. Um, Delta Dave said, meetup groups are great. Uh, where I find good models, and that's true too. You can go to some great meetup groups too. Um, like I said, one of the uh, big advantages though of working with a paid model is, is they're so professional. If you pay good money to get a good one, you'll get amazing portfolios out of it. And like I said, they'll teach you um, posing and things like that. But you don't have to do that every time. Like I said, once you've had that bit of experience, you can then go to Model Mayhem and do all these other things or go to meetups like what Delta Dave has said. I find Instagram also is a great place to, to contact models as well because you can find people that are interested, you can find work that you really love and I'll often contact people on Instagram if I want to shoot with them. Like I said, for me, 90%, 99% of my work is paid. I don't, I very rarely ever do free work uh, now. Even for YouTube, they're usually paying me to build their portfolio and that's the shoots that you usually see. So usually the shoots that you see are paid shoots, most of them are. Um, photography, uh, doing food photography. 
Uh, again, when I first started out, I did this. I went to a restaurant, which was a Greek restaurant, and I went in and asked them if they would love to, uh, if, if I could do some work for them just to build up my portfolio. And I did shoot uh, some work for them and gave it to them for free as long as I could share it. They actually hired me again to do their work professionally later on. So again, I got a kickback from doing that. Uh, it was great, and I did some beautiful restaurant photos. I, I did some amazing night photos of that restaurant that, that I still love even today. Um, but again, it's not something that I really love doing, so I haven't um, sort of pursued that area. But it is an area that you can do if you love doing it. Um, you know, go into a few places and offer to shoot their food if you can share it. So again, it's all about building your work and building your portfolio um, and things like that. So that's that article. Uh, let's look at some of the do's and don'ts about building your portfolio. Um, and this is uh, an article that um, showacademy.com has put this one up. Um, they're talking about um, print. Oh, do you have printed album or just online portfolio? Well, well, uh, th the thing is I'm saying here too, I think it talks about this um, a bit later on in one of the other things we'll look at. I think you need both. I think you need good prints as well as a uh, digital portfolio. Now, if you look over here, I'll show you um, some of mine which you can look at. Uh, if you look at this, this is a big book that I've actually uh, produced, if you're looking at it. And when people come through, I've just got this also sat just in my studio, which people can look at in prints, and they can see this um, basically when they're looking. Now, I can also take this to modelling agencies or wherever I'm going to so that people can sort of see how um, the type of work that I actually produce. Let me see if I can bring it over here a bit more. Um, you sort of see that again. I'll bring. I'll. I'll just move off. I'll show you some of the work. Oh, which way? That way. So you can sort of see basically when you're coming through. I'll just skip a bit, and you can sort of have a look down. Um, so I've got stacks of these images printed. Um, you know, and I, I just love looking at through them and, and sort of looking at all the old images that I've produced. Um, it's got stacks of different work in there, um, you know, that I can I can show. So that's that's in, that's an important thing to get as well is to, to you know get a good portfolio behind you in print. Um, I've also got, like I said, wedding albums that I'll also show. So that's also part of building your portfolio as well. I've got wedding book samples that I can actually show. Um, so they're really important things as well. Um, let me just come down here and see what they're saying. Uh, Jim said shooting food has the calorie <laughs> carb consumption peril. <laughs> I'd be the same, Jim. I'd be eating all the nice food. Um, I, I'm shocking, especially sweets. If it's sweets, I'd be wanting to eat everything. I don't mind doing it. Like, I always shoot food when I'm doing weddings and stuff because I like to capture all the details. So that that's a really handy thing to have as well. And like you saw that cupcake thing the other day that I shot, which I really enjoy doing as well. So I do like doing that sort of thing. Uh, I just don't push it for, like, for getting work. Uh, but it is something that I do all, excuse me, all the time. So let's go back here. So you should basically have a digital portfolio as well as a, um, a printed portfolio as well. I still don't think you can beat the physical print. I think it still looks much better than having a digital portfolio. I do use my iPad uh, to show images, but it's still not the same as when people see that print. Um, excuse me, there's something about that tactile feel of holding a print which is just, you know, just so beautiful. Um, and they're saying in here that... Um, Consider the multiple formats. So that what they're talking about there is the print and the online. Uh, and don't forget too that you're going to be having multiple different places uh, of, of having uh, your online portfolio. And you're going to be using things like a website, which I'll show you where mine is in, in upcoming episodes of this. And there's also things like um, you know Instagram and all that. But we'll look at that when we look at social network sharing and things like that a, a bit later on. Um, don't be afraid to shoot for free. And like I said, don't listen to photographers that tell you not to work for free. I think that is the biggest load of bullshit that I've ever heard in my life. Um, there's no problem with working for free when you're trying to build up your portfolio. So don't feel guilty about that, guys. And don't even feel guilty about saying it because photographers that say that basically are just looking after themselves. Remember, they would have probably started working for free themselves years and years ago, but they've forgotten about all that. There's nothing worse than these old photographers whinging about young photographers starting up. Just ignore them. There's nothing wrong with working for free at all if you're building your portfolio. 
When you get to a certain level though, I, even I will work for free if there's something I want to do. If I want to do something that I really would love to do, I'll work for free with a model because I want to share it and it's sharing. So there's no problem with doing that at all. So don't let anyone put you off at that at all. Delta Dave says, do you print your own images? Uh, no, I don't, I actually get them printed. Um, I found I'm really happy with the print supplier that I use here. I send the digital files off and I'll get them back within a day or so. I'm really, really happy with them. I just don't wanna get into printing and all that sort of stuff. Um, and this is a really good point because uh, he's, they're saying here, do get another opinion. And that's what I think it was Jim said earlier on, that you should always get someone when you're starting out to have a look at your work. And don't be, don't be afraid of getting criticism. But remember, it should be constructive criticism. Often if you publish in some sites, they'll tear your images apart, your images apart, and they're just terrible, nasty people. Don't go to those sort of places to get uh, criticism. But you should be asking people, someone that you, you that you trust or whatever that you that you like, you should be saying to them, David, please, please, or whoever they are, critique my work and critique it honestly, because that's the best way that you can learn to grow. So don't be afraid of getting constructive criticism, and you shouldn't take it as a negative. You should be looking at it as, well, how can I learn to get better? So that's an important thing. So when you're building your portfolio. Ask other people for basically what they think about that image and then only include the ones that people have said, yes, they love it or the majority have said they love it. Uh, or if you're trying to improve your work, ask them to critique it and then try and improve it and then ask them again and see if you're any better. But just don't ever stop thinking that you need to learn. That's an important thing as well. So do get second opinions, particularly with your portfolio. Don't use images that uh, need an explanation. And basically what they're talking about is the image should speak for itself. So what, you know, when you look at an image, it, it should speak for itself. And that's funny where usually we put captions on images and usually you shouldn't even need to put a caption on an image. The image should basically tell a story on its own. Now that story can be different for everyone, but that doesn't matter because remember, everyone's gonna see different things. Um, and it's saying in here too, do a strong and start ending. Uh, the thing too, and I must do this as well, I've got way too many images in my portfolio. You really probably should probably keep it down to about 10 to 15, and I've, I've got way too many. I, I really should just look at it and delete them you know, most of them. You really only should have your strongest images on your portfolio. Like I said, now I'm getting constant work, so for me it's not much of an issue. But if you're trying to build work, I would only be showing your best 10 images, for instance, and then when you get a better image, replace one with that new image. Don't have too much work there, and definitely don't put something in that's strong. If you only have five images that's strong, put five images on. If you only have three images, put three on. Don't give anyone the ability to not hire you. And the thing was, I used to do stacks when I was working in the, the industry. Uh, I, I worked for people like Hallmark Cards. I, I used to work for all of these advertising agencies and things like that. When I hired someone, I would always look for a negative in their, in their resume. And that immediately would let me discount them. So this is what I'm saying to you, it's so important. Don't put an image in that's not your best work because the second you do that, that can discount you for a job. Don't put it in. Always have less work, the more, and that's really important, especially when you're building your portfolio. Uh, let's scroll down, we'll go to the next one. 10 steps, this is another one, uh, talking about why you need a portfolio, who is it for? Well remember too, that you do need a good portfolio, and that should be basically a website that's only showing your best work, or like I said, your printed copy of your portfolio, so it's an important thing. Also, you've got to work out your audience. Who are you targeting? There's no point if you're trying to, um, there's no point if you're trying to target uh, weddings if you're showing babies. And this is why I'm saying about being more specific in the type of work that you're actually looking at. So it's important to stick with your audience and aim for that audience the whole time. So don't confuse them by putting different work in. And if you only have five images and then you're showing one which is food, one which is uh, a wedding, another one is a baby shot, you're not gonna get work out of it. So stick your portfolio to suit the audience that you're actually targeting. Um, paper versus digital, we already went on that. I think you should have both. Get a really good printed portfolio as well as a good digital portfolio. I think that's a really important thing. Um, style and design, well we've already gone through that when I showed you my style and also talking about setting up your style. And themes for your portfolio. Um, and that's, that's an interesting thing too because just make sure that um, 
your theme does match your style. Because there's no point if, you, if you're trying to do weddings if you have a baby theme that's on your actual website. Remember, you have to match the theme that you're actually dealing with with your style that you're actually trying to get work from. So if you're doing, dealing with weddings, have a theme that you think matches that. It can be a sort of nice, airy, professional-looking theme. If you're doing models, well, then you might want to have a different theme that sort of suits that as well. Um, so they're things that you have to also consider matching your theme of your, your website or whatever to the style of photography that you've actually chosen to actually do. And this is talking about choosing your shots. Again, it's saying that you would only should have, you know, well, they're saying 20 to 30 shots. I think you should have even less than that, probably. I've got way too many. And people tell me my, my website loads way too slow, and that's because I'm, I, it, there's too many images in it. Uh, so I am going to get around to taking a lot out. But like I said, I'm already established, so it's not as important for me as it is for, for you guys that are starting up. Um, and again, I would only be choosing your best shots. Anything that's not amazing, keep out. And that's why I'm saying it might help you um, to be shooting a, a paid model because obviously your, shoot, your shots are going to look so much better. Um, Three Trees said, hi, mate. How are you? Good to see you here. Is it better to have separate sites for each demographic? Definitely. If you're doing, say, um, weddings, I, I don't. I mean, I'm only really doing weddings and modeling and I don't separate them. But if you were doing multiple styles of photography, for instance, if you're doing weddings and babies, I would put up two websites. Definitely don't mix them um, because it is confusing for the clients to see that. And I've often had uh, brides that hire me because they say they love the aspect that I'm specialized in weddings and models. Remember, most model, most brides that hire me are hiring me for the look that I give. And even the weddings, it's still very fashiony look. It still looks like I showed you with those wedding images before. They still have that real same feel about it. So it's important that they're hiring me for the look that I've got. So having one style for me doesn't matter because I tell my brides when they come in that you're still gonna get that same fashion look in their weddings. If I was doing babies, I probably would have a totally separate site for that. If you're shooting just children, again, it might be a separate site for that. If you were doing food, I would have that as a separate site. And if you're doing real estate, have them all linked under separate things. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty important. Uh, I think under my 500px, um, let me just see if I can bring it up. Uh, we'll have a look at it. Um, let me just go to my website, oslaimages.com. It's the quickest way I can get down to my portfolio. Now you'll see if you look at my website, and we're gonna go through this at a later date because you're gonna have a look at how this works with me. But if we click onto portfolio, and I can click on um, to see my work. Now remember, just don't base, I, I mean, we can look at this too later on, but I mean, I would love to, and I probably should pay someone eventually to have uh, a better portfolio for me myself. But like I said, I'm, I'm now, in the situation where I have um, already established clientele and nearly all of my work is word of mouth. I don't advertise, very rarely do I advertise. Uh, so it's nearly all word of mouth for me and I'm already booked into 219. So for me, it's not an issue for me having work. So it's a bit different than you guys starting up. But again, I have put them under separate things, which if you look at um, weddings will, will come up under a different, um, uh, portfolio and again like I said the problem for me is that this does load up very very slow and I think this too is because um, I've actually just let me reduce this a little bit so you can see these oh wrong one that one um, you can sort of see in here that you know, this is my website. So you can see underneath, these are all the ones underneath here are part of my portfolio. So there is stacks in it that, you know, that you can sort of see what I'm sharing. But I've got way too many images, like I said, inside this. But, but for me, it's not really, like I said, it's not an issue. But I have separated them, if you look at them, up the top under different things. So I've got like wedding toddlers, there's engagement. Oh, I better lower this down because you can't see it. Let me move this over. So you can see that um, on my wedding portfolio side, I've got 
there's, there's this glitter shoot that I've actually done over there. Uh, you can also see that I've got toddlers if you want to, to look inside here, which is now going to bring up the baby or ch children shoots that I do. And like I said, again, I've got too many images in. That's why this takes a while to actually uh, load up. There's engagement shoots that I've got under a separate thing um, that you can sort of see that, that you know, come up and they're, they're totally different again. Um, there's pregnancy shoots that I've got some linked under that I've got in there as well. Um, there's model shoots, which I have under a separate um, image. I said that's come up with a, an error. That's interesting. Let me come back. Oh, okay, it's working now. I don't know why that was failing to load. Um, I've got the model shoots that also come under a separate thing here um, as well. I'm just waiting to see how long that takes to load. You can see, and I've got fast internet and it's taking a long time to load in. That's because I've got too many images on this uh, that's, uh, I really should um, change this so that it's, um, it loads faster. Like, like I said, I've got, I don't know, there's probably 40, 50 images inside each one of these. There's landscapes as well that I've got linked in here uh, that I've photographed as well. So there's all different landscapes that I've put into here. And there's also a dance section as well, um, which come up as well that I can do from all of my dance shoots that, um, you know, that I do. And um, so they, they, it sort of is listed, but the, the issue is too that when you're dealing with these, that I actually think it's okay to do that in your website, but if you're dealing with and you really are trying to make a lot of work from doing different genres completely, I'll be, I'll be putting separate websites up for each. And even in Facebook, I'd be having it running to different, almost like different companies. So you could have a baby set up and a, and a wedding set up if you're going to do it that way. Uh, I think it's important to probably specialise a little bit um, that way. Uh, Three Trees said, which social uh, sites do you recommend to be on? Um, and I'm going to talk about that too when we look through social websites. But it's things like Pinterest is a really big one. Facebook, obviously, is another really big one. And Twitter, uh, I think, are the main ones that are out there. But And Pinterest. But I'll talk about that when we look at... Um, uh, social media. We'll, we'll do that as a separate discussion. Um, so I think that's probably, just let me check down here uh, if there's any other things that we need to look at. I don't think there is. So basically, um, that's about it for today. So in conclusion, what I want to say to you is that the main thing to start with when you're doing this, remember we've talked about hardware and everything else with all the other chats we've had. Uh, the main thing now is that you have to build your photographic style. That's the first thing that I'll be doing now before you actually start to build your website. Oh, I've got an itchy nose. Before you start to build your website and everything else. So concentrate on your style for a period of months until you're happy with the style that you're actually producing and until it's consistent. That's the main thing I'd say to you before you go full time with your uh, photography. Once you've got your style down pat, once you've got your style down pat, once you've got your uh, lighting done correctly every time, you've got consistency in all your images, once you're comfortable with posing, things like that. And I'll show a video on that. I'll actually give you a video on how to pose as part of this whole series. But once you're happy with all of that, then you can start to build your portfolio, which I've just discussed with you uh, then, because you'll have images that are worthy of showing for your portfolio. Don't rush this because the worst thing you can do is be producing work that's not consistent. And remember, anything is searchable. So if you're, if, you're, if you're showing all of this really bad work, eventually it might come back to bite you. Only be showing work that you're really happy with. So take your time. Remember, don't rush this process. Be really confident. Do workshops. Uh, work with other photographers. Work with other wedding photographers. Work with models, things like that, to build a portfolio you're consist or, or a styles you're consistent with, and then build your portfolio from there. Um, so are there any other questions before we um, call it a day, guys? Like I said, I'll add this to the playlist. Uh, if you have any other questions, please leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Um, and the next video we come up with, I'll probably start to talk about how to build your... We might look at pricing, actually, and building your websites. I'm not sure which one we'll look at first, but um, we'll look at that. You can also leave in the comments, too, down below, anything you'd like me to discuss over this whole series. Um, because it, it'd be great to know, you know, what you guys want as well. Um, so I hope you're getting something um, out of this um, 
as well. Uh, like I said, SnapClick just said, love to work with you. Well, I, I, like I said, I'm always open for anyone to follow me around and do things with me. So, um, you know, it's it's always a opportunity. I, off, I usually advertise it on Facebook if when I need someone for those shoots. Sometimes people just ask me and they follow me along and that's fine. Um, yeah, so... Well, we might leave it there, guys. So uh, tomorrow's the live show. Um, so I'll have that on at the usual time tomorrow. Um, so follow me for that. I've got some interesting Sony news that we can talk about and things like that. Uh, so we'll go through some of that tomorrow. Uh, so join me for that, for the Sony news rumors and everything else. Jim said, um, sending off to print, what format do you send? Uh, do you mean what size? Jim, I usually get eight by 12 for my portfolio anyway. They're the image size that I actually send them off and they're just JPEG uh, formats that I send off to print. Is that what you mean? Um, Three Tree said, long flight for me. <laughs> you guys are just all gonna have to come out to Australia so we can have a walk around. Eventually I will come out to the States though, guys. I will be out there. Um, Snapkick said, okay, gotta fly to Australia. You'd love it. Melbourne actually today, yesterday, got voted the most livable city in the world again, uh, which is where I live. Uh, that's about the fifth year in a row, four, fourth or fifth year in a row, it's got the most livable city in the world. So. It's a bit of an honor to live in this place. Um, all right, guys, well, we might end there today. I've been going longer than I actually thought I would. I don't know how long we've been going, but quite a while, I think. Um, I'll see you tomorrow for Australia uh, for the next live show uh, on the Sony numers and rumors and everything else, and, and I'll take you through a, a shoot as well. Um, so we'll do that tomorrow. So uh, good day from me, and I'll see you again for tomorrow's live news. So bye, guys. <laughs>